So now we're going to build a Python dictionary class. And here is the code that we would put in our dictionary. I, I kept the strings really short because of, of, of all the, uh, I want the examples to be pretty short and easy. Um, so what do we do? We create a dictionary and we use the, you know, bracket, square bracket operator to create a key. It's a key value pair. The key Z match it goes to catch phrase. We print it out. The dictionary uh, Z goes to W, which is replacing catch phrase with W. Because if you overwrite the same key, you have to put the same value, the, 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 you have to replace the value. And then we're going to throw three more things. Y maps to B, C maps to capital C, and A maps to D. That's just so that it's not sorted too badly. And then I print it out, and then I um, print the length of it. I do a get, and with a default value of 404. So sometimes I get the, for Z, I get the W, and then for X is not there, so I get the 404. Again, kind of an homage to the HTTP error code 404 not found. And then I use it right over a little for loop for key and dict, uh, et cetera. And I can print the key value pairs out. We'll do the same thing in C. And again, this is almost a perfect transformation, literally. We first create the dictionary with calling a new. Then we uh, put the word catchphrase in the Z key. Then we print it. Then we put a W in the Z key, which should override it, and we print that. And then we set the Y key to be B, the C to be capital C, the A to be capital D, and then we print that. And then we ask, how long is it? And then we do a get to look up under the Z key and the X key, one of which is there, one of which is not there. And I get a null back in that situation. I guess I was a little C-like in my get code. And then I dump it out and I do a struct D node loop, go from the head until it's null, and I print out the key and the value from each of those uh, dictionary nodes, and then I delete it at the end. So this is the code. Now again, notice we don't know much about looking things up. We don't know how the length is maintained. We don't know how the static and dynamic allocation is going to happen. We now have a contract with a bunch of library code that is going to implement this dictionary object for us and do all of the memory manipulation on our behalf. Again, we start with the basic stuff. The big thing we're going to do is we're going to not just have a value. It looks a lot like a linked list. We're going to have a key value pair. The pydict has a head and a tail and a count, just like the pylist. And if you look at the, the, the constructor, it's pretty much like the constructor for the list. We allocate the uh, dict, pydict um, uh, structure, and we set the head and tail to null to indicate empty, and we set the count to zero, and we're done. And the same with the del. The del is very much like the linked list del. We are have to, because we've allocated the key, the key is also going to be a dynamically allocated pointer to a character array. So we got a free cur key along with cur value. But then everything else is the same. We, we, we pre, preload the next value, then we free cur, then we move to the next value. And then when it's all said and done, we free self, which is the pi dict value. When it's all said and done, we can call the new and then we can uh, set a key like catchphrase. And the, the key thing there is that key and value are both malloced uh, bits of memory. Just like, you know, before we had the text, which was a malloced bit of memory and copied, and we had to free it. But now we just have two things. And so the key and the value are two things that are, that are going to be malloced and then copied into the malloced area. So some methods for you to build. The lens should be pretty easy. Similarly, that we have a print that's going to be pretty, and I want you to match exactly the output of the Python and so it turns out that we can make a method called find, which returns a D node rather than get returns a string D and find returns a D node. And then we can use find both in get and in put. Now we use it pretty much in get to go find it and then return um, the, the value because we have the key. We look up, find it by key and then return the value. So. That's pretty pretty easy to do the get once you have find. So the find is find is a for loop where you're going to go and you're going to find it. And if you find it, you're going to send it back. Okay, and if you're not, you're going to send a null back. Now you better check if it's null, right? And including in the get, you gotta you gotta check if it's null. Um, but then in the put, what you do is you look up the old one with pydict underscore find, and if you get one, if old is not equal to null, then you're updating the key, uh, updating the value for the key, 
And if not, you're adding it. Now, the thing about the else clause here is it looks a lot like a linked list. Because really, if you, if you look at this thing, it is a linked list. It's just there's two values in each one. We're not doing anything magical. Now, more advanced dictionary implementations might use hash maps or binary trees or other things like that, like that were in chapter six that we didn't talk too much about. But for now, we're just going to make our dictionary be a linked list, but instead of just a value, it's a key and a value, so we can look it up by key. And so we're not doing too much tricky stuff to make our dictionary really by just adding a bit to a list. So let's just take a look at how this is going to work in sort of the real world as it runs. So remember, we have kind of the dictionary itself, which is a head and a tail and a count. And then we have the di dictionary nodes, which is our key and value and the next one. Now, the key and the value are not the actual strings. They're just pointers to strings, which means we're going to have to use malloc. to. S when we get a key and we get a value, we're going to have to malloc and copy both of those things. Um, so if we start and we see pydict underscore new, we're going to get a, a dictionary with head and tail that point to null. And then if we add catchphrase, well, we've, we, we allocate the Z, we allocate and copy the key, Z, and we allocate and copy the value and put those in key. And then next is null and head and tail point to this thing. So we've allocated three things. We've allocated a, a D node and we've allocated a character, two character arrays using malloc. Okay, so then let's say we're going to run the next line of code which is setting the key Z to W. Now, when you're in the put code, you go and you call find, and you see that there is a thing. There is already a Z in there. So what you've got to do is you've got to replace catchphrase. So you actually, before you go and make a new value, you have been copy W into it, you want to free the old stuff. And so you tend to free the catch, free the value that was in there before, and then you malloc and copy in for the new value. So if you're done, at the end of this, you will have catchphrase somewhere in magic free space. We don't know where how C does magic free space, but it does do it. So at the end of the second put, you still have one entry, but the value has been changed from pointing at catchphrase to pointing at W. Then we add y equals b. Well, you do a find and there is no y key. So now it's more like a linked list. You create a new d node and you append it to the end, just like in a linked list. And then you save the key and point key at it. And then you save the value into new malloc space and then point value at that. And then we go to the next one where we point c. Uh, we, we don't find c in there, so we create a new uh, uh, d node. And then we, we do a malloc of the the key and a malloc of the value and we point to those and then copy the data into those two malloc areas and then point key and value at those malloc areas. And you can kind of see that this is really at this point, it's unless we find the key uh, in there already, it's just a linked list that happens to have two character arrays that are dynamically allocated and copied, one for key, one for value. That was a bunch of object orientation. It was kind of a walk down the path that Guido Van Rossum took probably in the first few weeks of him building the string class, list class, and dictionary class. Chances are good he built something very, very similar. And then he's like, okay, now i got to make this better. But, uh, you know, if I was just writing this thing, he'd probably just type this out. It's kind of pretty for computer scientists who've been doing algorithms and data structures their whole lives. It's like, well, why don't I just make a class that does this? You know, now that, I, now that I've got sort of an object-oriented universe, let me hide all of the dynamic memory. And that's really what we're doing. We're hiding the dynamic memory and the implementation details and all the for loops and while loops, they're being hidden. They're important. And if you were to look at the source code to stir, list, and dict in Python, you'd see they're allocating and reallocating. They're, they're doing it a lot more cleverly than what we did. Um, you don't want to call realloc too many times, but for, for now it works. We're doing small stuff. Um, there is an infinite number, there's an infinite array of optimizations to make all of this way faster and more impressive. Um, but that's, that's really for another time. So we've kind of got the idea of the, the baby steps from a procedural language with pointers, structures, and dynamic memory allocation 
how you would take the step using those underlying things in a procedural language to build basic objects and support those objects, perhaps as you're building a new language like Python.